COVID-19 has given despair, debt, loss, uncertainties and hopelessness to many of us. However, on the other side, it also has given us a moment to reflect ourselves, our realities and come before the superior God. The Bible teaches us on Jacob and Esau. Esau was older to Jacob. Before they were born, God had given Rebekah a promise. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. Genesis 25, 23 God had clearly set a distinction between the two children. Let us read the Bible verse once again. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. At that time, it was not known who would be the first to come out, Jacob or Esau, but it was then already clear that the younger will be blessed over the elder. Yes, the time of their birth finally came. Esau came out first, followed by Jacob. Although both of them were not aware of anything, according to the promise, Jacob is now blessed. The Bible says here, And the older shall serve the younger. What God had promised, it is the same God who is going to fulfill it. And Esau said, Look, I'm about to die. What is this birthright to me? Then Jacob said, Swear to me as of this day. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Genesis chapter 25, 32, 33 Even if Esau would try protecting his birthright, it was not possible. The reason was, he and his brother were under the promise of God. The promise of God would not allow anything otherwise and would surely remove the birthright from Esau. This teaches us that the promise of God is much stronger than we humans. We may equip ourselves, we may have intelligence, but at the end of the day, it is the promise of God that triumph. The Bible is God's promise. It is also called the Testament of God. 700 years earlier, the birth of Jesus Christ had been predicted by God's prophets. Let us read one passage of the book of Isaiah. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 If we calculate, it comes to 680 years, the time of Isaiah's death and the birth of Jesus Christ. God had foretold the coming of the Messiah. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Let us look at the verse carefully again. It says, Unto us a son is given. It seems like the prophet himself was present at the time of the birth of Christ in Bethlehem. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53 verse 4, 5 Dear friend, let us read again carefully on this one too. It is so amazing. The prophets seem to have traveled back in time, standing at the place of Golgotha, witnessing the very crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The sacrifice of Christ had taken place in the calculation of God already. Jacob would become the elder one 
already had taken place in the heart of God. But it has to take place practically. Therefore, one day Esau became hungry, so hungry that he had to sell his birthright for a bowl of stew that Jacob had prepared. In the same manner, the prophets of the Old Testament had prophesied the coming of Jesus Christ. They had seen the sacrifice of Christ beforehand. However, the event must practically come to existence. Hence, Christ came into this world becoming flesh and had to borrow the womb of Mary. The Old Testament had a rule. Without shedding of blood, there cannot be remission of sins. Hence, Jesus, wearing the flesh, had to shed his blood, practically executing it. If that was not so, God cannot be a righteous God. God gave the promise, and he himself did the work of fulfilling it. For as the rain comes down and snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth, and but that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Isaiah 55 verse 10 So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, it shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Isaiah 55 verse 11 Dear friends, let us remember this one thing. We are under the promise of God. If we believe in the promise of God, we can live a happy, joyful life and a life without any regrets. Thank you for listening.